Yeah. Okay. That's good. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Hi, folks. This is Al Pizzano, the state chairman of the Constitutional Party of North Carolina, also the reporter for the newly formed Carolina Constitutional Guardian News Network. I'm out here in Reno, Nevada today at the uh, Constitution Party National Executive Committee meeting, and I'm here with a very special guest, an American hero, an American patriot, Mr. Clive Bundy, who, as many of you would probably remember, had a standoff against the Federal Bureau of Land Management over some ranching issues, and it was big news for a while. And you could look that up on the uh, on the internet and find out everything about that. But Mr. Bundy was the, the uh, keynote speaker here, and what he ended up doing is he made a very good point about why this issue was happening with them shutting down the ranchers here in Nevada and the beef. And he talked about the food supply on this. Now we know that there are things going on in North Carolina, China with Smithfield Foods buying up a bunch of farms. We know that we've heard about Bill Gates buying up millions and millions of acres of farmland. And this is obviously something, Mr. Bundy, that has been going on and in the works for decades, even as far back as your situation. And what I'd like for you to do from this point, if you could explain from your perspective what it is that you thought about them shutting down the ranchers, your neighbors, 52 neighbors, 52 other ranchers, and their, their, their beef cattle. Okay, uh, I, want, I want to go back, uh, here back to 1964. And uh, in 1964, I was a FFA uh, representative for the state of Nevada went back to Kansas City to the National Convention. And in 1964, Elko County, which is in North uh, East County of Nevada, was considered the capital, uh, cow capital of the world. And so in other words, that meant that there was more cows per capital, I guess, than any place in the world. But there was also thousands and thousands of sheep in uh, Elko County. Today, I would guess the number is maybe uh, one fourth of the amount of cattle in, in that county, as it was in 1964, and almost zero amount of sheep. So that uh, county was, was a great producer of beef and and uh, mutton and wool. And today, it's you know they, there's some great mines there, but the agriculture part of it has almost disappeared. In my county, down in Clark County, that. Uh, uh, in Clark County in 1992-93, they were 53 ranchers in Clark County. And today I'm the only rancher left. And so what we're talking about, this is happening all over the Western United States. These, these ranchers are disappearing. The cattle and sheep numbers are, are, are almost gone. Uh, the resource is still here, not being used. The resource is to produce red meat and wool and uh, it's uh, now it's being wasted. The environmental people have been involved in, uh, in all of these type of things. But the, one of the biggest problems is these ranchers keep, keep a sign in contact with the federal government. And when they do, that makes federal makes them um, uh, uh, responsible or not accountable, let's put it that way, to the federal courts. And so if we have a rancher that has a problem or uh, he ends up in a federal court and he never wins because they're all bureaucrats from the, from the BLM ranger to or, uh, say field man or uh, to the ranger to the, the uh, prosecutors to the judges to, to the ninth search to the ninth, ninth court, circuit court to the Supreme Court. They're all paid by the same people. And so what's happening, they're really ruining the, the food chain here in America. Now, right now, uh, beef prices are coming up a little bit. And I, and I make this comment. I said, well, they will never allow the beef prices to come up because they'll just bring one more shipload of beef from Australia or, uh, or Central America somewhere, Argentina. They'll bring one more shipload in here and, and that'll drop the beef prices again because they don't need American beef. They, they got this other beef coming in. So uh, the Frank are really, 
there's almost to, uh, I don't know, into a mercy of the broker. <laughs> the one that, one that makes the money when they ship the beef out and ship the beef in, the broker gets a percent of that. And that just goes on and on. It's doing the same thing with the oil. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do in America, but we got to start taking care of our uh, our, our food. Uh, look at what's happening with our oil. I mean, you talk about a disaster. When I fill up my fuel tank, a thousand gallon fuel tank, it costs me five thousand dollars to fill up a fuel tank that lasts me a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, we can't. I can't do that very long. And not these big trucks that put. Two, three thousand dollars every every day into those trucks that can't happen. Those tractors take the fuel, and yet I don't know. So the bureaucracy has plenty of money; they can pay five dollars, but we can't. Right, right. So basically, in your opinion, they can control by the pricing as to whether it's economically feasible for a rancher to stay in business, right? I mean, by just importing so they just corn beef. Yeah, just import another uh, uh, shipload of box beef. I don't know how many metric tons, but it, it's in the millions of metric tons that they bring in on, on, on just one ship. And uh, just think how many cattle it takes to, to, you know, that's our competition. Sure. And so in other words, the beef prices are never going to go up as long as that supply keeps coming in. So. Well, what do you see happening if they are effective and successful at getting rid of the American rancher? Well, you know, the American people is just going to, they're going to pay the price. Um, what are they going to replace red meat with? I don't know. Uh, you know, you got the environmental thinking they're going to replace it with vegetable oil. <laughs> but, <laughs> or insects, I've heard that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but, so. but, you know, beef is for dinner, and beef is really uh, the best red protein that the world's ever had. Right. I mean, it's good. It's good for dinner. It's good to eat. Right. And it's good for us. Uh, we, we need it. And, uh, you know, uh, we are the most health, healthy people on earth in one sense, and, and one of the reasons is because we're, we're eating red meat. But let me tell you something about a cow. A cow is a, a, a fascinating, a greatest uh, a factory you can only imagine. And let me tell you, a cow can go along the edge of the road and eat weeds off the edge of the road, and within a few hours she can promote, pr produce food for a baby. Right, right. No, she can change the weed into yeah. baby food. Into baby food. And just in a few hours. That's yeah. a pretty good machine. That, that sure is. <laughs> that sure is. So, well, Mrs. Bundy, um, I just wanted to hit on that aspect of it because it is frightening to see the food chain break down. And when you did mention that, and that happening so many years ago, that this whole thing was obviously planned out, and the attack on the American ranch and the American farmer, foreign companies coming in, buying up these these uh, farms and controlling the food supply of we Americans. It's a dangerous thing place to be in. You know, in the, in the western United States, there's millions and millions of acres of this, this desert type uh, land, and there's no way to harvest the resource off that land. There's, there's a couple of ways. One is through mining for minerals, and the other way through is grazing for cattle. There's no other way. You can't take a machine in there and, and harvest that resource. A cow or a sheep has to harvest that. Uh, in, on my ranch, it takes 100 acres to sustain, oh, sustain the life short. of one cow. Oh. I mean, one 100 acres, is, and that's why I have a million acres. Sure. <laughs> uh, it, it, but the thing of it is, there are millions and millions of acres that still that can produce that or better in the western United States. I probably am down in the bottom of the barrel when I say 100 acres per cow. A lot of these lands are maybe 30, 40 acres per cow. But there's a lots of acres out there. And then every one of those acres, the resource, the new, new renewable resource, remember, this is a renewable resource. It renews itself every time 
the, it rains every time the weather changes, every season it renews itself, and it's again food, a feed for an animal that produces red meat and some wool for you. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so we need to be using this resource. Right, right. And, you know, folks, once again, it's, it's the American rancher that, and farmer that has been the backbone of this country, that's fed this country, it's, it's fed our armies through world wars, and it's under attack now, and it's been going on for decades. And, Mr. Funny, I just want to thank you, sir, for your stand as an American, a true hero and a patriot. You know, I highly respect you and your wife. I mean, I followed you from the get-go, and it's an honor to have met you. And thank you so graciously for the interview for the Carolina Constitutional Guardian News Network. This is Al Pazano signing off with Mr. Clavin Bundy in Reno, Nevada, folks. Thank you.